Hey coaches, Jeff Allen here. Just wanted to do a follow up from the survey and uh, let you know that we all appreciate your help, comments, concerns, ideas, and uh, super excited about where we're going and the uh, program we're putting together. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Jeff Allen, uh, swim coach for 34 years, most notably the Wilton Y Wahoos. Um, worked for USA Swimming for three years as the Eastern Zone Sport Development Consultant and uh, spent some time with Triton Wear and Arena and now working on a project that I think is a, a game changer and will elevate every coach who chooses to um, look at the insights that we have. Um, swimming has been my life and uh, like I said, 34 years of coaching, high school, summer club, YMCA, uh, everything but college. Sat on the National Committee for YMCA of the USA for several years, was a president of the YMCA Swim Coaches Association, the National Association, um, and the creator of Facebook Swim Coaches Idea Exchange Group, which is what you're seeing this on. And I appreciate the 25,000 or so swim coaches from around the world with your contributions, your support. We just finished our 10th year. And uh, I, when I started it, I never thought it would happen and explode like it is. And it actually falls right in line with what we're planning to do. Um, thanks again. And what I'm going to do is this is going to be a video going about some, some questions, coaching, learning, and um, kind of an intro to the program that we're going to be releasing on September 5th. So be back at you shortly. Hey coaches, back again. Um, during this presentation, I'm going to be walking around my farm. I live on a farm that we called Flip Turn Farm. Uh, the reason being is, of course, I coach for 34 years and I have two stepsons that swam, one at UVA and one at Lake Forest College. Um, and so I've been in the stands as a swim parent, a swim coach, a volunteer, Colorado operator, everything but an official. So we thought it'd be cool to um, give you an idea of what it's like on Flip Turn Farm. And um, also, so many of you on the computer looking at formal presentations, that gets boring and it's so easy to mute or do something else while you're doing it. So I thought we'd try and keep it interesting here. And so one of the things I want to talk about coaches is learning. And, you know, in this day and age, there are so many hoops to jump through to be a coach. And so many of those hoops don't necessarily make you a better coach. Might make you safer, might make you more educated on assisting somebody in a life-threatening situation. And of course we have the whole safe sport issue. But what is really out there that's gonna elevate your game and allow you to connect the dots for your athletes to be more successful. I have a philosophy that uh, the day you stop learning is the day you die. And as coaches, we should be thriving and hunger for new knowledge always, uh, regardless of where it's from. It's up to you to decipher what's gonna work for you and, um, and how you can implement it. You know, not everyone is gonna get to work with a Caleb Dressel or a Katie Ledecky or a Missy Franklin or a Michael Phelps. But we are working with athletes, and I believe every single athlete we work with still has room to improve. And the way to do that is to invest yourself in the changing, ever-changing dynamics of coaching. Um, you can't coach today like you did 10 years ago. You can't coach today like you did 20 years ago. I look at how I coached when I first started, and it's nothing like I would coach today. Um, technology, swimsuits, uh, tempo trainers, Triton wear, um, <clears throat> so many various things that um, have changed that impacted our, our program. And we have to embrace that and then figure out how we can incorporate that into our platform and into our programs. Um, one of the reasons why I started the Facebook exchange is because 10 years ago, there really wasn't anything on social media where coaches could come together, discuss what's going on, as well as uh, share ideas and ask questions. You know, every coach, and I just wanted to show you the bees behind me. Uh, I am a beekeeper, so those bees flying all the way around me. We do collect honey, uh, and it's a pretty interesting and satisfying hobby. In fact, I think every person and coach could learn from bees. They are incredible creatures. Um, so anyway, to embrace the technology, to embrace the changes, to keep an open mind and realize that just because you did it 10 years ago, 20 years ago, is the way it needs to be done today, is not really the best plan. Um, we need to stay refreshed, we need to stay invigorated, and we need to stay motivated 
to provide a platform for our athletes that are going to allow them to achieve. And so thirst for knowledge is super, super important. Back at you again. So coaching is changing. Coaching has changed. It actually changes every day. If you looked at the discussions at the ASCA clinic 10 years ago or 20 years ago and look at what's being offered today, you know, there's research on sleep, there's research on nutrition. Dry land training has, has made a huge change. Look at the physique of Mark Spitz from the 72 and the physique of Caleb Dressel, night and day. You know, I swam for Charles Red Sylvia in college and um, he didn't believe in, in strength training. We did a lot of proprioception stuff. And he's the one that revolutionized the dolphin butterfly. And um, in fact, his swimmer was the first one, first gold medal ever in the Olympics for the 200 fly in Melbourne in 1956. So it has changed. And, and we, as coaches, need to wear many hats. You know, most coaches want to be on the deck and coach. But the problem with that is, as a coach, you have to have some business background, some marketing, some conflict resolution. I'll just say hi to Annie. Hi, Annie. You say hi. And, and be able to computer skills, writing skills, communication skills, all those things. And if you don't have them, you're going to fall short because as a head coach, you are responsible for the entire program, whether you coach those kids or not. And so you have to embrace that change and take advantage of that change and, again, thrive on information and new ways to do things. In addition to change, from a coaching standpoint, our athletes have changed. Swimmers these days have so many outside influences that we can't keep up with. They've got academics, they've got part-time jobs, they've got relationships, they've got church responsibilities, they've got music class, chorus class, play. And the big one, I think, is social media. They live on their phones and they're driven by what they see on social media. So that makes it challenging. And it makes it challenging for us because how do we keep them, how do we keep them on track to reach their goals? Every swimmer hits a plateau at one point in time. And the program we're putting together is gonna to help identify and get those athletes over that plateau. Um, parents are way more involved in today's world. Boy, are they. And that's a good thing and a bad thing, as long as from a coaching standpoint, you educate and, and get them to understand what their role is. That's not gonna be 100%, but uh, it's a start. And then the other change right now is everyone wants results now. We want to go fast this weekend. We don't care about next weekend. Swimming and the word convenience do not coexist in the same sentence. There is nothing convenient about swimming. It is a hard sport. It requires a lot of work and a lot of dedication and commitment and also a lot of moving parts. And so we have to train our people, train our coaches, and train our athletes to understand that we need to take one step at a time. And as a head coach, you're also going to be expected to have all the answers. And the mistake coaches make is they'll make up an answer if they don't. Instead of saying, you know what, that's a great question. Let me do some research. I'll get back to you. So, again, today's challenges of a coach are much different than they were years ago. And they're going to continue to change, especially for those who want to do things the way they've always done it. And that just, that just doesn't work. That's, that, yeah, that's going to catch up with a coach sooner or later. So a quick story about my swimming. I think I started swimming when I was 10 or 11. I swam the first year, I didn't take it seriously. Then I did a paper route, yes, a paper route with the old canvas bag and throwing newspapers at the front doors. And then I went back to the team, I think I was 12. And I remember going to the banquet and I was the only kid who didn't get a trophy. And I was devastated, absolutely devastated. And so I guess I had a choice. I could quit or I could go back. Well. 12 months later, I went to that banquet and I got the high point award, the most improved award and the hardest working swimmer award. So for people to say that, you know, everyone needs a participant trophy, otherwise they're going to be crushed. No, that's life. We need to embrace failure. We need to learn from failure and then move forward. And as long as we learn from failure, it's really not failure. Just look at coaching. We tear apart poor performance is much bad than we analyze great performances especially on the majority of the level in this country. And that's really not right, because even though someone does the best time, there's so much more that needs to be looked at. So much more, and I don't care if it's, if it's a, a Olympic gold medalist or a 10-year-old making their first age group cut. 
every swim needs to be analyzed because there's room for improvement for every swimmer. So let me talk about this course. We are putting a list together of amazing speakers. It's gonna be a 21 day course with a series of 30 to 60 minute presentations, all online. So you can look at them when you decide. Uh, some of the speakers are Dr. Ross Fleming, Mike Murray, Tom Johnson, Nate Boyle, and Jake Tyson, just to name a few. And the reason for this is to give you a valuable information that you can use to help your swimmers get better, faster, increase their potential for learning and performance. It's a virtual course, so you get to watch it at your, your convenient time. Uh, there's no way that uh, we're gonna put a program together and everyone's gonna sit down at the same time. Um, we wanna bring education to, to you where you may not be able to get this type of education. You don't have to travel. The cost, which will come out later, is very affordable. And, and the speakers are first rate. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been to, I don't know, 30 something world clinics. And I don't know how many regional clinics and even taught the USA <coughs> regional clinics. <coughs> Excuse me, got a tickle. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna bridge a gap between what you know and what is available. So a glimpse into the course, understanding athleticism and the components of learning and change, learning how to find swimmers' physical weaknesses, and even relating that linking to in the pool technical problems and implementing, implementing the tools to fix the problems. You know, so many coaches, and I was one of them, you know, we make this, this, this excuse, oh, you know, they get all the good talent the swimmers. And that may be true in some cases, but every swimmer can be talented and more talented by identifying their athleticism and increasing their athleticism. And that's what we want to focus on. That's what we want to deliver to you. So a couple of details. The course begins on September 12th and runs for 21 days. Sign up will begin on September 5th. Make sure you get your spot as soon as you can. Once registration is closed, it will not be reopened. Uh, you can still fill out the survey I posted several days ago. Uh, we really appreciate that. And if you have any associations with coaching friends, please share this information with them. Um, you know, our goal is to reach and impact as many programs and coaches as possible. And um, I, in advance, want to thank you for your time, uh, your commitment to competitive swimming, and your understanding and willingness to learn and explore new levels of coaching. The next video will be teaching you some secrets that you may not know you can use right away. Again, thanks for sharing and look forward to our journey together. Take care. Bye.